Kyle Coley from the Glenrock campus. I hope you're well. Um, we're going to be sharing about John 3.3 this morning or this evening, whenever you're looking into this. So let's dive right in because we have just a couple minutes. I was reading recently in a book by Dr. Philip Yancey called The Bible That Jesus Read, and he was talking about crisis of faith. He said there are three watershed moments of faith for the believer. One is, do I matter to God? Two is, does God care? And the third one was, why doesn't God act? And when I was thinking through that, it reminded me of the times that I've gone through crisis of faith myself and have been on my knees with my face or sometimes railing against God. And John 3.3 3 is one of the verses that I go back to, uh, either thematically or literally go read it, because it really ministered to me uh, many times over the years in this area. John 3.3 3 is a time when um, Nicodemus, who was a Jewish leader of the day, a very well-respected, compassionate, intelligent man, not some evil prisoner in jail for murder, he comes to Jesus um, and he says, Teacher, not God, not Lord, not Savior. He says, Teacher, we know you must be of God because of the miracles that you do. And Jesus, immediately recognizing that he has not accepted Jesus as the Messiah, accepted the gospel that Jesus has been teaching in the area during that time that Nicodemus had heard him teach, looks right at him and says, you must be born again. And it's an unnerving thing for Nicodemus because it seems when you read the verses and you look at the Greek tenses, Nicodemus is taken aback a little bit. It's almost like saying, well, you, don't you know who I am? I'm a learned person of this area of, of, the, of the, uh, the Torah, of, I'm a Jewish teacher, I'm a respected leader, um, I can't be born again, and I'm old, what do you expect me to do? Jesus immediately explains what he's talking about. In the subsequent verses, Jesus says, this is an act of God the Spirit. God the Holy Spirit comes, takes residence in our lives, changes us gives us a new nature, a new spirit to honor God, gives us a new heart, a new compassion, and a new love for the things of God. It's a work of God that does it. It's not because any of us have sinned for the, not sinned for the last couple of days or any of us have finally figured out after reading and studying for a couple of years or oh, we're nice people. And nice. It's the act of God. That's how important you and I are to God. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. The old has passed away. Behold, all things have come, become new. This is a wonderful thing that I have found during my times of, of, of um, struggling that I'm reminding myself of how important we are, that God would do such a thing for us. And for the agnostic or the atheist, there's probably been times when you've wished God was real, when you've thought about God, and then you've dismissed because, you know, your prayers weren't answered or other people's prayers weren't answered and suffering has bothered you. But in Ecclesiastes 3.3, 3, it says, God has put eternity in our hearts. That eternity is sort of just a catalyst or it nudges us toward thinking and considering the existence of God. Being born again is when we accept the Spirit of God and we are changed from the inside out to believe in God and have fellowship with God. Keep in mind that this is an act of God because he loves us. Making us a new creation is because he loves us. In Isaiah 118, it says, come, let us reason together. God is specifically saying, I don't expect you just to take this. Here's a suggestion, consider it this way. And the rest of the verse goes, though your sins or though your estrangement from God, or though your separation from God, or though your lack of belief in God be as scarlet, I can make them as white as snow. Though they be as double-dyed crimson red, the verse says, I can make them as wool. One of the themes of that verse, not exhaustively, is wool is the original material that those other two things became. Scarlet, material, double dyed crimson red, gives you the word picture of how stark different those two were. Wool is the original unblemished garment, the rest is not. Being born again is being restored to fellowship with God through God the Holy Spirit as an act of the Holy Spirit that we respond to. And now we have a chance to live our lives that way. 
I hope all is well. Think biblically.